For over a century, every paleontology textbook has told us the same story. Archaeopteryx was the first true bird, the missing link that proved birds evolved from dinosaurs 150 million years ago. But what if that entire narrative just got completely rewritten by a single fossil discovered in a remote Chinese quarry, meet Baminornis jengensis, a bird that should not exist according to everything we thought we knew about avian evolution. This creature possessed something that was not supposed to appear for another 20 million years, and it changes everything we understand about when birds truly mastered the skies. For over 160 years, one fossil has dominated textbooks and museums as the undisputed first bird. Archaeopteryx lithographica emerged from Germany's limestone quarries in 1861, perfectly timed to support Darwin's revolutionary theory. This creature became the poster child for evolution itself, bridging the gap between dinosaurs and birds with its remarkable combination of feathers and reptilian features. For over 150 years, Archaeopteryx was considered the textbook example of a creature caught in the act of evolution like a freeze frame capturing the precise moment when dinosaurs took to the skies. The scientific community embraced Archaeopteryx partly out of necessity. It was the only well-preserved Jurassic bird available, creating what amounted to a monopoly on early avian evolution understanding. Northern fossil sites in Germany and later China became the exclusive focus of paleontological research, while southern regions remained largely unexplored and undervalued. This geographical bias shaped decades of scientific thinking about where and how birds evolved. Despite its fame, Archaeopteryx had serious limitations that suggested it was more dinosaur than modern bird. The creature possessed a long, bony tail that resembled a raptor dinosaur like Velociraptor primitive flight muscles and clumsy gliding abilities that made sustained flight questionable. Its anatomy told a story of evolutionary experimentation rather than mastery. Teeth lined its jaws, sharp claws extended from its wings, and a reptilian skeleton supported feathers that seemed almost awkwardly attached. Flight capabilities were estimated to be comparable to modern pheasants involving short bursts of powered flight or gliding between trees. The creature's musculature and wing structure were not optimized for sustained aerial locomotion. While Archaeopteryx could achieve brief periods of powered flight, it relied heavily on gliding and climbing rather than the sophisticated aerial maneuvers that define modern birds. This raised questions about whether Jurassic skies were truly mastered by capable flyers or merely occupied by struggling proto-birds. The entire narrative rested on incomplete evidence. For 150 years, this single species represented all of Jurassic avian diversity, creating what researchers described as a huge mystery and frustrating gap in the fossil record. The existence of Archaeopteryx strongly suggested that other more advanced birds must have been flying during that era, but their fossil evidence remained elusive. Baminornis shenghensis completely rewrites this story by proving that advanced flight adaptations existed 20 million years earlier. This discovery transforms Archaeopteryx from the sole ancestor into just one branch of a much more complex and diverse early bird family tree that was already flourishing across multiple continents. The key to understanding this revolution lies in examining the anatomical details that separate true aerial masters from primitive gliders. A small fused bone at the base of a bird's tail might seem insignificant, but this single anatomical feature separates clumsy gliders from aerial masters. The pygo style forms when the last few tail vertebrae fuse together, creating a rigid anchor point that modern birds use to control their tail feathers with precision. This structure represents one of the most profound morphological changes in the evolutionary transition from dinosaurs to birds. Without a piger style, early birds face serious aerodynamic challenges. Archaeopteryx possessed a long, flexible tail that was aerodynamically inefficient and provided limited steering control during flight. The creature's reptilian tail structure 
offered minimal maneuverability and made sustained controlled flight nearly impossible. Modern birds use their piger style to anchor muscles that control rectricial feathers, allowing tail feathers to provide steering and generate lift during complex aerial maneuvers, like sharp turns, sudden stops, and precise landings. The functional difference between these tail structures is remarkable. A long dinosaurian tail acts like a rudimentary rudder, providing basic stability, but little else. A piger style supported tail fan operates as a sophisticated flight control system, enabling birds to adjust their center of gravity and execute complex three-dimensional movements. This fused bone structure shifts the body's center of mass forward closer to the wings, facilitating more powerful and controlled flight. Baminornis gengensis possessed this critical adaptation 150 million years ago, suggesting that natural selection had already optimized flight mechanics to near modern levels during the late Jurassic period. The creature could perform aerial maneuvers that would have been impossible for Archaeopteryx. High-tech imaging revealed that Baminornis's pygos style structure closely resembles those found in contemporary birds, indicating remarkable evolutionary convergence across vast spans of time. However, Baminornis lacked the robust sternum or breastbone found in modern birds, which serves as the anchor for powerful flight muscles. This structural difference indicates that Baminornis likely still employed a flying style different from its fully modern relatives. Um, the presence of a fully formed piger style in Baminornis proves that Jurassic skies were not filled with struggling proto-birds, but with capable aerial predators and masters of three-dimensional flight. This universal feature in modern birds had already evolved to provide the necessary anchor for fan-shaped tail feathers that facilitate sophisticated flight patterns. This discovery pushes back the known appearance of this derived short-tailed feature by nearly 20 million years, fundamentally changing our understanding of when birds truly became birds. Yet this advanced tail existed alongside surprisingly primitive features that reveal evolution's unpredictable nature. Evolution rarely follows a straight path from primitive to advanced, and Baminornis jenkensis perfectly demonstrates why textbook diagrams of linear progression are dangerously misleading. Mosaic evolution describes how different body parts evolve at different rates and times, creating creatures that blend cutting-edge adaptations with ancient features. This process produces anatomical contradictions that challenge our understanding of how species develop over time. While Baminornis possessed a modern pygos style and advanced flight capabilities, it retained a plesiomorphic hand structure resembling that of non avian dinosaurs. The creature's ornithothoracine shoulder and pelvic girdles were remarkably bird-like, optimized for the muscle attachments needed for powered flight and aerial maneuvering. These structures supported the complex wing movements required for sustained controlled flight through three-dimensional space. Yet, its hands told a completely different evolutionary story. Equipped with functional claws, these appendages could grasp branches, catch prey, or defend against predators like a small dinosaur. The claws remained sharp and well-developed, indicating they served crucial roles beyond simple vestigial remnants. This persistence of dinosaurian features alongside bird-like flight adaptations underscores that traits do not disappear in neat linear sequences, but can coexist and serve multiple functions simultaneously. This anatomical contradiction challenges the idea that birds evolved uniformly toward a single optimal body plan. Instead, natural selection was experimenting with multiple solutions, simultaneously testing different combinations of modern and primitive features. The unnamed furcula specimen found alongside Baminornis adds another layer of complexity with analysis suggesting this second fossil was distinctly advanced, resembling a member of the Ornithuromorpha, a diverse group of birds generally associated with the later Cretaceous period. Although researchers refrained from naming this poorly preserved fossil, its advanced nature suggests significant diversification was already occurring further, underscoring the complexity and multi-branch nature of Jurassic avian evolution. 
These discoveries suggest that Jurassic ecosystems supported multiple bird lineages, each testing different combinations of features. Some lineages emphasize flight optimization while retaining terrestrial capabilities. Others may have pursued entirely different evolutionary strategies that left no trace in the fossil record. Baminornis proves that evolution does not wait for one system to perfect before starting on another. Natural selection was simultaneously optimizing flight feeding and survival strategies, creating complex anatomical mosaics. This approach explains why defining the first true bird is so challenging and why the Avialan family tree is far more intricate than previously imagined. The question remains, where were these revolutionary discoveries hiding all this time? The answer lay buried in the swampy deposits of southern China, far from the traditional fossil hunting grounds that had dominated paleontological research for over a century. The Zhanghe fauna site in Fujian province represents a completely different ecosystem from the famous German and northern Chinese localities that shaped early bird research. This southern location marks the most distant point from traditional fossil sites where late Jurassic bird remains have been discovered stretching our understanding of ancient avian distribution across vast geographic distances. The southern site preserved a diverse community of turtles, fish and vertebrates in ancient lake bottom deposits, suggesting a rich tropical environment that supported complex food webs. The sprawling ancient swamp environment of Fujian was shared by Baminornis and the meat-eating dinosaur Fujian venata, emphasizing the diverse nature of the Zhenghe fauna. These paleo-environmental conditions differed dramatically from the limestone quarries of Germany or the arid deposits of northern China, indicating that early birds thrived across multiple climate zones and habitat types during the Jurassic period. The geographic expansion of early bird discoveries challenges fundamental assumptions about where and how avian evolution occurred moving beyond the traditional European and Northern Asian focus that shaped scientific thinking for generations. Advanced technology, including micro CT scanning, geometric morphometrics and AI assisted imaging allowed researchers to extract maximum information from fragmentary fossils that would have been considered unusable just decades ago. The technological revolution in paleontology has been particularly transformative for processing complex fossil data. Researchers utilized advanced methods like geometric morphometrics and phylogenetic analyses to precisely map Baminornis' position on the evolutionary tree and study fragmentary evidence. This dramatic improvement enables researchers to analyze far more specimens and extract detailed anatomical information from even poorly preserved remains. Multiple bird specimens from the same site suggest that Jurassic avian diversity was far greater than the single species dominance implied by Archaeopteryx's historical monopoly on early bird evolution. The environmental context of Zhenghe fauna indicates that early birds occupied diverse ecological niches, not just the specific preservation conditions found in northern limestone deposits. Southern China's fossil sites are rewriting the geographic and ecological story of bird evolution, revealing a global radiation of early avians rather than a localized phenomenon restricted to northern regions. These discoveries prove that sophisticated aerial mastery emerged far earlier and more widely than anyone previously imagined. This revolutionary discovery forces scientists to completely reconsider the timeline of avian evolution. Baminornis zhengensis represents more than just another fossil discovery. This creature provides evidence that 150 million years ago, the skies were already mastered by sophisticated flyers whose capabilities rival modern birds. Based on the findings of Baminornis, scientists now must speculate that the emergence of the earliest birds could be traced back much further than previously thought, possibly originating between 172 million to 164 million years ago. The revolution in our understanding of early bird evolution is just beginning as new technologies and unexplored fossil sites promise to reveal even more surprises about our planet's ancient aerial pioneers. 
The next time you watch a bird effortlessly navigate through the air, remember that this mastery of flight is far older and more complex than anyone imagined just a few years ago.